Now, we already know that the conservation of energy proves really useful in solving a variety of problems. So can we use this concept in electrostatics? Let's see. In our previous energy work, kinetic energy was one half mv squared, or the energy of motion. In electrostatics, let's see. Do the charged objects have mass? Yeah, we're talking about electrons, protons, some other ions, but they all have mass. Okay, so that's good. Do the charged objects move? Well, yeah, any of these objects can be moved or even purposely accelerated to really high speeds for a variety of purposes. Hmm, so velocity is fine. So, we can use the exact same formula for kinetic energy in our world of electrostatics. What about potential energy? Well, previously we found that we could calculate potential energy using force times displacement, or Fg times H if we're focusing on gravitational forces. If we're staying near the surface of the Earth, we can estimate it as MgH. But we also looked at potential energy far away from the surface of the Earth and discovered Gm1, M2 over R. And that was great for planets and satellites and such. So switching to electrostatics, we'd switch to Ep equals F. E times displacement, or the electrostatic force. And for point charges, recognizing that the electrostatic force will vary, we can use Ep equals K Q1 Q2 over R. And we can compare these two formula and we see that they're amazingly similar. So, there's not really much new to learn for using conservation of energy in the world of electrostatics we're pretty much ready to jump in and solve these problems. The only thing I want to clarify a tad more involves the force directions, and thereby knowing whether potential energy is increasing or decreasing in the different situations. We'll consider a situation where we have two charged objects, one positive, one negative, and we think back to the direction of electrostatic forces and we realize that these two objects would be attracted to each other. They are being pulled together. If we want to increase our potential energy, we would move them apart or stretch the stretch spring even a bit further, and we would be doing work to increase the potential energy. Considering another situation, but this time with two positive charges, and in this case, they're not being attracted. They're repelled. So, same concept, but everything backwards. These objects want to get away from each other. If we want to get them closer, we need to insert work and increase the potential energy. If we were to release them, their potential energy would be converted to kinetic energy, and they both shoot off in opposite directions. Bottom line here? Well, the conservation of energy works great in electrostatics for solving problems. The methods and or equations are the same or very similar to our previous energy problems. The main thing to watch out for here involves the directions of our electrostatic force. Unlike our gravitational force, the electrostatic force may attract or it may repel, and we have to note where they would naturally go work and therefore increasing potential energy would be in the opposite direction.